I think that we should put aside the idea that when somebody says two states for two peoples, the meaning is that he's anti-Israeli or pro-Palestinian. In an understanding that this is the interest of the state of Israel in order to keep Israel as a Jewish state. So any American president who say two states for two peoples is not anti-Israeli. This represents the Israeli interest. And when it comes to our basic needs in the agreement, we can have the support of the United States. Later, let's take security. Security is not a favor to Israel. Does the United States, or, or can the United States afford another terror state or extreme Islamic state in this region? They cannot. So let's sit together and decide what's going to be uh, uh, the security conditions in the agreement, not as a favor to Israel. And basically, this is not also anti-Palestinian. I mean, they, those that we negotiate with, they don't want Hamas to control the future state as well. And when it comes to the need to, to have the blocks of settlements as, as, as part of the future borders of Israel, because this is the only way to end, to end this conflict, because no Israeli government can just ignore these realities on the ground that led a lot of Israelis to live there with the blessings of, of, of Israeli uh, 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 governments. But the, the focus should be on defining the final st or the borders and not just grabbing more land. It's over. And yet, there are, I don't want to undermine the difficulties. The decisions are going to be difficult like I don't know how to describe it. I negotiated for nine months. The Annapolis process didn't reach that end. It was stopped because of the elections in Israel. And negotiations are tough. And I could say after each and every meeting that there is no partner on the other side. Believe me, it's easy. Maybe they could have said this on me. By the way, I both of us didn't enter this blame game that we now hear on a daily basis because there was an understanding that we are serious enough but we are touching things that are not only security that are not only logical it's about it's about maybe being a Jew as well we are talking about Jerusalem we are talking about places that I believe that well I said today I was born in Tel Aviv but my Empirical code comes from Temple Mount, like each and every Jew. So it's not like, okay, let's make the deal. It's difficult. But the other alternative is the worst case scenario for the existence of the State of Israel as homeland for the Jewish people. And this is the reason that I pray and hope that we find here in Israel a majority to make the decision and a majority to support this. I know that it's possible. There is a political majority to make the decision. I believe that there is also a public majority to make the decisions. And hopefully, we are going to see this kind of decision being made in the near future. Well, hopefully, anyway. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, thank you very much for, for being here and for your eloquent remarks. Um, you talked a lot about Israel as a Jewish state and a democratic state. You talked a lot about the, democratic, the Jewish side of that. We talked for a minute about the democratic side of that. Um, many of us in diaspora, and I think many people in Israel, view the coalition politics within Israel as being very destructive and a lot of ways making a lot of the issues you're referring to more difficult. Um, is, there any, is, there, is, is there any hope? Um, I mean, the rest of the world has democracies that don't seem to have quite the same, the, the same difficulties coming up with a government that speaks with one voice, et cetera. Um, is, there any, is there any hope that some 
transformation can occur on the on the government side, on the democratic side, to to improve that situation? Okay. Uh, yeah, it, it is true that the election system in, in, in Israel is something that needs to be changed. Uh, I think that it's crucial for in order to make the decisions which are needed, uh, also internally. And unfortunately, we have a combination of uh, quite problematic system with weak politicians. Uh, and I want to make it clear, sometimes there is bad system, good, you, you can have good politics in bad system and vice versa. But now this is a combination of both. And unfortunately, when somebody, at, at the end of the election day, nobody knows who's going to be the prime minister. It is clear now, more than ever, that it's not the uh, head of the biggest party. Uh, but yet, in order to be the prime minister, you need, at first, to get the blessing, the blessing of the president. And in order to do so, you need to pay to those that are going to say to the president that he needs to give you uh, the possibility to do so. And then you need the support of the uh, parliament, so yeah. it's another day of payment. And at the end of the day, the big party that forms the government is losing not only uh, money in terms of uh, the Israeli budget, but also its ideology, if they have. So basically, when you are, I'm thinking about uh, any company, you have the uh, directors of the board, and they are thinking about uh, what is needed for the company. It, it's against the law to think to, to have uh, uh, to think about your own personal interest. It's the interest of the country. But here in Israel. If the government is a kind of director of, of the board, and I'm not talking about something which is not legitimate, but you have small parties that represent sectors of the Israeli society, and in cabinet meeting, they are thinking about their voters, not about the welfare and uh, uh, the future of the, the entire society. And this is part of the problem. And this system needs to be changed. I can tell you that I offered Netanyahu a completely different government, which uh, is based on Likud and Kadima, Kadima and Likud as the basis, changing the system for the future, making an agreement for the future of the Jewish state, and making also some internal ch uh, change and not give monopoly on the Jewishness of the state to Shas. Well, he refused. Well, it didn't happen yet. <laughs> uh, and, and, and in a way, it, according to uh, the, the, the political or the guidelines of the government and the coalition uh, agreement, nobody can change the system of election because Shas has veto rights on these changes. So it's a kind of a vicious circle that we all face. I think that this needs to be done. Uh, as I said, we offer this to Netanyahu, uh, not just after the elections, but also afterwards. And this is a, deci a decision that he can make, but it doesn't look like this for now. Please, Richard. 